Yo, 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 finally. But finally, right? Much my better goodness. connection. Oh, my gosh. The connection <laughs> was insane earlier, bro. I could not, like, we had our whole area go down for a uh, Wi-Fi. So every, I couldn't even go to, like, a Starbucks and get what? on Wi-Fi. Yeah, man, it was, wow. it was bad. It was bad, man. So, it was that I, bad. Yeah. So was, you were up in the hill? Yeah, I'm, I'm up here and, and like with all these mountains and things like that and then everybody going on, it's like going mm -hmm. kind of crazy. But other than that, how's everything going in the studio? How's the how's the coronavirus and everything handling out there? Man, Chicago is locked down right now. Um, mm. They closed a lot of businesses, obviously, I always closed. Mm -hmm. uh, all the parks, some of the major parks in, um, what's it called? Uh, like the Lakeshore Drive area. Yeah. Uh, um, all of that is shut down. Um, what else? On oh, the bridges, I think right now they like lifted up the bridges so people can drive across uh, the bridges now. Word. Wow. So, yeah. man, what I've been doing is pretty much trying to keep myself quarantined. No. The only two places that I go to is just studio home, studio home. <laughs> no, I, I hear you on that, man. Myself, you know, keep my head down, focused, and creating work. Yeah, I hear that. So, <clears throat> excuse me. With um, I'm gonna get everything started. You know, we got a, a few folks coming in and folks getting started. Um, being that you know we've known each other for a while, a lot of folks you know are just getting into the work and will just be learning about your work or have uh, you know, been you know seeing your work and seeing you on Instagram and all of that, but don't get a chance to know about the work, the detail and how much, you know, uh, just the craft and how much of you goes into the work. Let's start by uh, giving folks a background of, you know, who you are and how you started painting. Well, to keep things very short and tidy, um, I'm from, I'm from Ghana. Uh, I was born and raised in Ghana and I, I, moved to the United States about um, um, around 16, 17 years old. Um, and uh, my mother was here already, so I joined my mother with two of my other siblings up there, and the baby um, of two other older siblings that I had. And um, yeah, I've always loved art growing up, um, whether it's drawing, sketching, cartoon mm -hmm. characters, or what have you, when I was younger. Um, and, um, yeah, I think one of the things that kept me drawing often when I was younger was that it was, it was something cool to do. And mm -hmm. I, I grew up in like a really small village and, um, drawing and painting is kind of like, I mean, drawing for the most part, uh, was kind of like something that, you know, I used as a kid to express my, you know, how I felt about things around the world. Things I saw in cartoons, characters, sketches, Scooby Doo, Dexter, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Flintstones, all of those characters, Superman, Batman, Happy yeah. Flat, all of those characters that you think about. Cause I was sketching around. But yeah, that was how I started learning how to draw and create, building up my craft as a young, as a young, you know, kid living in Ghana. Nice. So how 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 has America, Chicago, for example, with it being a blossoming arts town, how has that helped to enhance your understanding of the arts market, the art scene, and also your practice? Wow. Uh, that's a loaded question. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, excuse me. Um, really, my, in my experience, um, post- um, my um, academia, I think that um, directionality um, has been a, a great um, focus of mine mm -hmm. and um, continuing to develop the conversation around my work um, that I do. Um, I started as an architecture, mm -hmm. uh, in architecture, and then um, I think um, third year to fourth year of my college per, um, career, I decided to pursue art. Um, as a career, which was something I should have probably done. Yeah. Um, but, you know, for other circumstances and reasons, I didn't before, but once I made a decision to pursue art as a career, um, it was like, um, 
I had to really hone in on the craft conversations about my work, work that I was interested in doing, conversations that I was interested in bringing into my work. Mm -hmm. um, I had to like really be a student of that craft, you know? Yeah. Continue to develop. And I am still, I am, I'm a lifelong learner in this bit yeah. uh, sort of art. Um, and just continuing to develop. And then one of the things I was very interested in and talking about was using um, portraiture um, to tell stories of identity, mm -hmm. to tell stories about um, everyday people that were in my Daniel community or here in Chicago now with the body of work that I'm doing. So those nuances can kind of like con contribute to the conversation. It's an ongoing conversation. That's why I try not to like, you know, um, like build up um, to a sense that um, I don't necessarily um, stifle my creativity by yeah. niching myself to just one, you know, one practice or one discipline. Most definitely. Most definitely. So I've had the privilege of, you know, for one, knowing you, two, you know, visiting your studio physically and seeing some of the new works and uh, some of just the previous beautiful works. And how does the studio practice of, you know, getting in there, creating, how does it translate for you to seeing your work at an art fair or in a gallery show? How is the feeling different for you as an artist? Um, I think that, um, I mean, as an artist, I think one of the, one of the main um, things that try to bring into my work is creating pieces that spark conversation, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and that conversation may be subjective. That conversation may be objective in a way that, you know, I've had um, situations where people have talked about my work in a way that I necessarily did not intend to talk about my work in that way. But mm -hmm. again, they, when we, the conversation comes up, then it opens up all the dialogues, right? And I'm mm -hmm. also learning through those dialogues and continue to chime in on those conversations. So I think that um, when I'm in the studio working, I think I have um idea of... Um, the conversation that I want to have or bring forth within the work. Uh, mm -hmm. But then when the work is seen by other, you know, their general audience, it becomes something that everybody partakes in, right? Everybody contributes yeah. to that conversation and it builds up over time. And I think that those conversations help develop my work in a way because mm -hmm. it's, when you have work that's seen by everyday people who can relate to the work, mm -hmm. they're able to um not only contribute to the conversation but they're also able to bring something to the table in which you're the art the artist you can take from yeah. to continue to develop the work that you create. You know? Definitely. Yeah. Most definitely. So with your work, one of the one of the things I've always loved about your work is that it takes on a form of boldness. Um very, very bold, colorful backgrounds with very bold statements on your subjects. Uh, kind of like Barclay Hendrix in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, what what is what is the background of creating? You know, such a solid or you know, in one painting you had almost like a fabric, you know, type background. What? How does you? How does that? How does the materials and all, and all that help you determine your starting point? Is it the is it the background? Do you create the color that determines the image, or the image that determines the color? Well, um, let's take, I'll take a step back and if you make more than that a little bit more. Um, photography informs the work, uh, which is also, I like to say that it's also part of the medium of the work, painting, yes. um, because um, when my journey of meeting these people that I uh, bring forth into the art, mm -hmm. you know, traveling from here, going back home to Ghana or just meeting them on the streets and what have in my encounter my physical engagement with them. Mm -hmm. It's I define that as being part of the medium of working because when I'm standing in front of the canvas, those conversations are what comes up when I'm yeah. when I'm thinking about what how you know how we met, what I talked to them about, and those are some of the things that I try to bring out while painting. Mm -hmm. And then with I show sitting in front of the canvas and painting, I think that those Going back to those same conversations, uh, what I try to like, um, whether it's a background texture or mm -hmm. the background color, 
who they are as people. Sometimes the background color may be their favorite color. Um, sometimes the texture may be specifically um, and from a fabric or outfit that they were wearing that inspired me to, you know, include that into um, the composition of the work. So all of these nuances kind of like inform the work as I, you know, continue to create um, from there. But absolutely, it is in 100% informed from um, photographing and then from photographing the developmental stages um, to play where I'm able to, you know, I don't force them to necessarily mm -hmm. um, um, be in a certain way, um, capture them in the instance in which they're in, whatever they're doing at that moment, I capture that moment and then I try to like, you know, just um, bring some visibility um, yeah. to who they are as people um, on campus. Most definitely. So yes. how how has this extra time in the studio allowed you to see further into these images, into these subjects to develop, you know, even more quality? Because the new work you're working on, I think it's, I think that's it in the background, the yellow piece. It's, uh, it, has, it has a, uh, oh, wow. Currently, yeah. let me move this easel out of the way. So I'm currently working on, um, well, this one right here I just completed yeah. about, a, what, I believe, uh, several days ago. Mm -hmm. I completed this piece, um, and it's a painting of um, one of my students, um, current oh, okay. student right now. Um, she's a senior. Um, and then um, the next one uh, that I'm working on is also a student of mine as well. So this one I just started bro. about three days ago. So um, still on probably the second layer um, mm -hmm. in this piece. So it's not quite there yet. I'll give it another maybe a week and a half. See if I can push this one through. Um, but um, these two pieces, interestingly, um, is um, is part of a broader narrative that I've been trying to bring um, into my work, which is um, mm -hmm. the idea of exploring the dualities of my about my experiences um, yeah. here in the United States and in Ghana, and mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. using people in my community, people that I um, see every day. Um, yeah. Um, as I won't say subjects, but as individuals who um, speak to um, that conversation, exploring those um, nuances, because I realized, um, I think late last year, earlier this year, that um, I've spent the same amount of time as I've spent in, as I spent in Ghana, um, mm -hmm. growing up in Ghana, as I have over here, and for quite yeah, we, we a talked about time, that the last time. Mm -hmm, Quite a period of yeah. time, I was doing a lot of work that were of people um, from my community in Ghana. Um, but mm -hmm. I also, I realized that I've lived here, you know, for quite some time. That this conversation, these um, the community that I'm in right now, has shaped me and molded me as an artist in a way that I can, you know, bring um, subjects or uh, individuals. Um, from my community here in Chicago in the fold of the work. So these are the yeah. people that are derived from that experience here in Chicago. Yeah. Those are beautiful. As a, as well. now, now that's that piece is interesting. Is that does that piece show your duality in the transition of like the if the women in your family is like, you know, like the women that are, you know, adopting, you know, more of an I guess an American identity, you know, mm -hmm. taking the same traditional stance as, you know, an African woman's identity, you know, but like almost like a traditional is like traditional way of dance or a traditional way of presentation. Cause that's kind of um, like what I'm seeing with that, you know, that, that duality showing the same power mm -hmm. in the stance of each work. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. You're right. I mean, even pushing it even further, um, I think this piece right here, uh, one of the um, the ideas that um, burst from the conversation around this piece was finding, um, um, underlining um, um, gesture within these two uh, women, um, kind of playing off the outsider and insider perspective about who they are as people. 
like if and if you were to see um these yeah. two women perform in the street like how would you as a viewer or uh, view them or see them mm-hmm. and internally how would they then oh, see themselves how would they work together would they be in sync as mm-hmm. they're dancing and that is kind of like a metaphor to how women black women work together um yeah. in our culture and also like them being you know performing in the same genre of music you know which is dance um how would they be in sync with one another so mm-hmm. it invites it invites several different um platforms of conversation about it yeah. uh which I, i i find very interesting because sometimes I'll talk to people about the work and they will have something to say which even makes you know which I'd not even considered as an artist while working on a piece which mm. you know, really mm-hmm. um it's really exciting to see when these conversations that like grow um into other conversations and open doors to people talking about their experiences with even like with colorism within mm-hmm. uh, my culture and uh, just like people seeing with a colorism with um um people and trying to emulate different cultures um picking up different things from the different cultures and using it as rears like all of those nuances that like, come into play uh when uh, when I show this work wow and it's it's interesting because you know that piece has them you know in a a cooler tone in a sense you know together mm-hmm. when these the two students are individualized with very stern, you know, uh positions. You know, one yeah. with the, almost like the Malcolm X position, you know, with the mm-hmm. hand to her head mm-hmm. and the uh, and the other uh with a very, you know, almost fed up as if, mm-hmm. you know, like taking charge, you know, with that high energy, those colors, it almost adds a I don't want to say aggressiveness to it, but it adds a very matter of factness. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. like we're we know what we're talking about and we're ready to take this on. You know? Like that Precisely. sure that surety. You know what I mean? And it's almost like a transition where in the other painting you're showing how, you know, there's still this relationship, but in the other two it's like don't get it twisted. We 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 can we can fuck shit up too. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you know what you know what I mean? And I, yeah. I think those I, are I think those are I, beautiful. I, I view it this way. I think that um, much like there is this um, there is this um, what's it called a like negative jaded perception mm-hmm. about different cultures and stuff. I think Chicago yeah. and Queens is in the same um, um, position where people outside of Chicago when they hear Chicago like all the all this negative jaded, jaded information that mm-hmm. is seen in the media or is projected by the media is what people take take as face value yeah. um but then people that are in the community in this Chicago locality like they are everyday normal people that's much like my students here that you see um mm-hmm. and i think that those is the same thing that i was underlining or exploring uh when doing um paintings of people that are in my community in Ghana. Um to a certain degree, um I think that there is just like um there there's misinformation and there is just like mischaracterization of people. Um mm-hmm. uh, that comes into the fold when people hear the broader sense of the word Chicago or yeah. Africa or Ghana, quote unquote. But I think that identity stems from our experiences in life and yeah. if we break that identity down into the locality like although I may be from Ghana I haven't been to all parts of Ghana right yeah definitely so I may be, I may be living in Chicago I haven't been in all parts of the United States so I can't I can't say that I can relate to people who are from Georgia or mm-hmm. who are from Mississippi or who are from LA or I played in Lake sometime but But you know what I mean like I yeah, don't yeah, have experience definitely. there so I cannot speak to that right I live in Chicago I live yeah. in the south side of Chicago that locality sense I've embodied for quite some time and I can talk about that because these are people that are in my community you get what I mean so yeah, most I think that that sense of identity is just 
our everyday um inform you know inform the conversation does that make sense yeah it does most definitely have you found any similarities while you've been painting you know like these two subjects as it relates mm -hmm. to the other paintings that you've done in the like the past year like even what the ones that i was that you were working on when i was there the last time have you seen any similarities like in form in um in a structure of the setting and the way that like maybe the the girl from one of your students from chicago may have had the same temperament or the same personality as a young girl from Ghana. Have you started mm -hmm. to make any of those connections uh, 